Perhaps the fatal mistake made by William McIntosh, born in 1778 to a Scottish father and a Creek Indian mother, was to try to satisfy the demands of both cultures. McIntosh lived with his mother and was raised in the Creek Indian village of Coweta, near present-day Macon, Georgia. However, he spent enough time in Savannah, where his father lived, to learn to speak fluent English. By the time he was a young man, he was comfortable moving in both Indian and white societies. Through blood or marriage, McIntosh was connected to prominent Georgia families. Several relatives were governors, and his associations with powerful Georgians shaped his political views. McIntosh was a shrewd businessman. Using his skills and connections, he developed a profitable trade network, which enabled him to own a tavern, a ferry, and slaves on his cotton plantations. Although he was one of five chiefs in the Creek Nation, his loyalties to the United States were stronger than those to the Creeks who raised him. McIntosh supported the efforts of the U.S. Indian agent Benjamin Hawkins. Hawkins' job was to civilize the Indians. That meant getting them to change their way of life by encouraging them to own slaves, grow cotton, and own personal property. In reality, the United States agenda carried out through Indian agents was to get the Creeks to renounce their sovereignty and to give up their lands. The idea of white expansion into Indian lands divided the Creek population. Upper Creeks especially opposed it, and they were contemptuous of McIntosh, who worked with Hawkins to promote the so-called civilizing of Indians. When civil war between Upper and Lower Creeks broke out in 1813, Chief McIntosh sided with the United States government, and he led a battalion of Lower Creeks. At the end of the fighting in 1814, both sides, the Upper and Lower Creeks, were forced to cede large portions of their land to the U.S. government. In 1821, McIntosh angered many Creeks when he negotiated a treaty at Indian Springs, ceding Creek lands between the Okmulgee and Flint Rivers to whites. McIntosh was personally enriched by the treaty, receiving a thousand acres of land at Indian Springs and another 640 acres on the Okmulgee River. The second treaty of Indian Springs in 1825 would be McIntosh's undoing. Under pressure from Governor George Troop, who sought to eliminate all Indian claims to land in Georgia, Chief McIntosh and a handful of other Creek representatives ceded the remaining 7,000 square miles of land held by the Creek Nation to the United States. McIntosh's actions were his death sentence. According to a Creek law McIntosh once supported, any Creek leader who ceded land to the United States without the full support of the Creek Nation was to be executed. On April 30, 1825, hundreds of Creek warriors surprised McIntosh at his home in what is now Carroll County. They set fire to McIntosh's home. They stabbed him in the heart. They shot him to death. At his death, McIntosh was not trusted by either the Creeks or white Georgians. And by the end of 1827, Creek claims to land in Georgia were extinguished. Most Creeks were removed to Oklahoma. <laughs>